Hive and the Universal Music Group, or UMG, announced that they are expanding their partnership to a 10-year distribution deal. UMG will also be pushing for the use of Hive's fan platform, Weavers, among its artists. So, does this mean that UMG is the new label of BTS, New Jeans, Lesser of Him, Seventeen, TXT, and, of, and other groups under HYBE? Why does HYBE have to partner with UMG when they already have a global company? First things first, the deal with HYBE and Universal Music Group is a distribution deal. BTS's label is big hit. While HYBE has not disclosed any part of BTS's contract with Big Hit, the process by which they had to get the contract approved indicates that BTS's deal with Big Hit isn't your ordinary label and artist deal. Let's put it this way. That kind of approval process that their contract had to go through isn't even required when a multinational company hires a new CEO. That being said, BTS was is and for the rest of their current contract with Big Hit will remain the owners of their own creative direction. Now that that is out of the way, let's discuss the music distribution deal. What is music distribution? Music distribution is the process of getting your music to different digital and physical marketplaces to make it easier for the audience to consume it and for the artist and all parties involved to get paid accordingly. There are so far two types of distribution, digital and physical. Under each of this type, there are different mouths to feed, meaning more and more people and companies get a cut from the earnings of a song or an album. The platform or the store gets a cut, agents get a cut, distributors get a cut, and many others. So if the earnings get diluted, why won't Big Hit or Hive just directly distribute the music and albums? Why get a middleman? The simple answer is, it's not as easy as you think. Even though HYBE is considered a big company in Korean entertainment, maybe even in Asian entertainment, they are, in fact, small in the US, let alone the world. They would need a hell of a lot more than $900 million, not even $2 billion, to be able to set up a global distribution system that is efficient and will protect the rights of their artists. For us to understand this better, Let's talk about some basic concepts. Each country has their own regulations. Copyright, finance regulations, IP, and other laws that affect and concern an artist's earning and rights in a country differ from country to country. Even global platforms like Spotify adhere to local laws. If you want to do a business in a country and not get cheated, you need local lawyers, local consultants, local representation, local company, and others. If Big Hit or Hybe wants to distribute the music of their artists to, let's say, 50 countries, they would need to set up 50 companies and hire 50 sets of experts. Oh God, do you love lawyers? I don't. Well and good if laws and regulations are cut and dry. Unfortunately, most often, they are not. There's politics and um, loops and quote-unquote unofficial negotiations happening for someone to establish and run a company in many countries. I hope you get what I'm saying. You don't want the lack of presence either. While it is expensive to establish presence in a region, you don't want the lack of representation either. What if someone infringes your copyright? What if someone plagiarizes your song? What if the country eventually becomes big enough? You don't want to miss the opportunity to be there or enter the territory too late. Now that the basics are out of the way, let's talk about digital music distribution. First is establishing ownership. An artist must prove that they own the music they are selling. If marketplaces, especially digital ones, just allow anyone to upload their own music to sell, remixes, copyright infringement will be off the charts, which is exactly what happened to SoundCloud and why it almost folded. Distributors are now in charge of figuring all of those out. So, for example, if I use Eminem's rap in a song that I wrote, they will ask for proof I was allowed to do that. If I'm unable to produce proof, they show me away. So yeah, 
its legality, but also a way for the platforms like Spotify and iTunes to protect themselves from paying for songs that weren't used with permission. This is especially important nowadays because management companies, including Hybe, use a multitude of writers in one song. Songwriters pitch and beats, melodies, lyrics, who knows where all those came from. If a songwriter suddenly comes forward claiming that was her melody used in the chorus of Lesser of Him's song, sues Hybe and wins, it won't be the problem of Spotify or iTunes. It will be the problem of the distributor. Quality control. You know how much garbage there is on SoundCloud? Having a middleman keeps the service to a certain level of quality. You can also look into YouTube. YouTube's main thing is still user-generated content. So people don't expect the Netflix experience from YouTube. And you can actually see it, you know, the amount of garbage on YouTube. Even the packaging is a concern. This Kid, a distribution service, for example, makes sure an album art looks professional, that it isn't using the same art in multiple songs, the quality of the song recording is professional level, screen artist's name are properly written, and others. You can't have crazy capitalization and random characters in there. It's cheaper to stop the crap from getting on platforms like Spotify than trying to remove it. Logistics is another. Each platform has a different legal and technical requirement from file format to covers to legal documentations. If Hive distributes their music directly, they will have to do all of this one by one, even if they target only the top five platforms. Assuming this top five actually start allowing artists to go to them directly, that will still require manpower and resources. Those are capital HYBE or other management companies and labels can use somewhere else. Now let's talk about physical music distribution. UMG will become the wholesale intermediaries between HYBE and their artists and the retail outlets like record and department stores like Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Amoeba, and others. UMG has agreements and connections with wholesalers around the world, allowing them to stock their physical records in stores across the country and around the world. This is a big advantage because UMG already has the utilities, platforms, and facilities to ship the CD and other merch in thousands of locations globally. Hive doesn't have to worry about payments, returns, permits, shipping, security, insurance, manpower, manpower, legalities, more legalities, and even more legalities. Why set up your own warehouse in, let's say, Germany if UMG already has one? If you set up your own warehouse, you need to hire people to run it, maintain it, insurances, set up payment, warehouse systems, buy transportation systems for delivery, and others. How many CDs do you need to sell in a year to maintain all of those? Let somebody else take care of that. Decades of building the network. UMG has been building their network and developing their facilities for decades. And that is really what is required as of the moment to have the kind of efficiency and reach that you need to truly distribute your music globally. Who can wait decades for Hype to build this network? With the onset of blockchain, NFTs, and others, things might go faster, but not fast enough to condense 100 years of business and experience into two years. That's why you make a deal with big distributors. It is oh so romantic and ideal, and honestly, I would prefer it that way, to go independent. Unfortunately, the difference in politics, regulations, and laws alone in every country make it nearly impossible to be independent and also global. And now for the last question, why UMG and why Scooter Braun? Why UMG? Because they're the biggest in, in the world. They have the biggest distribution network and they are probably the biggest music label in the world. They had the previous partnership with, with Sony and we know what happened to that. So if you're going to break your original partnership, then might as well go to the biggest. So that was a good strategic move for Hybe. Why Scooter Braun? Because he's the CEO of Hybe America. Uh, but I can address the financial report of Hybe. I know that he was heavily castigated along with Bang Shiok because Hybe America lost money. That's just how business is done. If, you're, if you are 
Hybe America is practically a startup in, in the U.S. And so they're setting up a lot of their networks, resources, facilities. They are acquiring new companies. It is expected that they were going to lose money. And they, it is expected that they will continue to lose money for several more years before they actually get an ROI. It'll take a long time for them to get an ROI. It's all about cash flow. And the loss, actually, if you look at things, it's not that bad. That's just how it is. If you're, as I've said, if you're a startup, startup, you're trying to start a big company, you're acquiring a lot of things, setting up a lot of things, the capital expense is going to be big. So it is expected that you're going to be losing money. Um, and they are acquiring businesses, not just here in the U.S., but in other countries. So they are going to borrow money. People who don't understand business would probably be ma making a big issue out of it, asking why do they have to borrow money just to be able to acquire business because nobody talks away 100 million somewhere so that they can pull it out and just pay somebody if they want to buy a business. You don't do that. You just borrow money from the bank and then you just make sure that you have enough cash flow so that you can pay the bank. That's how it is done. <laughs> okay, no big deal. That's just how things are run in, in businesses. Okay, I hope that clears it up. I hope that that helps so that I got a lot of question about this questions about this. That's why I decided to do um, a video. If you have um, reactions, if you have anything to share, you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. You can say whatever it is that you want to say. Just please do so respectfully. Um, also, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that notification button if you haven't already and also share the video. Also, please follow me on X. Um, I just uh, posted something in the community uh, section and it's just this is the first time I'm actually trying to be active on X and I'm starting to understand why many of you hate that platform. <laughs> But yeah, my goal is really to build a community where we can actually interact closer, maybe even like start a project, something that we all are excited about. And so I'm looking for that place where we can actually do have that kind of community. I thought X is going to be it. Um, but if you have other suggestions, please let me know. I am I started my Patreon. The link should be in the description box. Okay, but follow me on all the social media links that you see on your screen right now. And thank you. I appreciate you. Till next time.